welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and uh, time to solve another crazy hard Sudoku live on the channel. Well, not necessarily crazy hard. I honestly have no idea how hard this is. We do occasionally get reports from our testers, but I've often forgotten them by the time I sit down with a puzzle. Uh, this is called The Eye of the Beholder by Kyle Watt. And the, the joy of us solving live is you get to learn something and, uh, and see us learn something as we go. Uh, now, I certainly learned something here because this puzzle is based on another form of beholder about which I had never heard. It looks like this. See if you can see the resemblance to the shape in the puzzle. Pretty clear, I think. Not bad. Very well done, Kyle, to create a puzzle based on this. This is apparently from Dungeons & Dragons. Now, somebody on the live stream was very surprised to learn that Simon had never played Dungeons & Dragons. I suspect the audience will be less surprised that I have never played it, but that is the case. Um, anyway, this puzzle is themed on that. We'll have a look at that in a moment. I do want to mention all of the stuff. So this features thermos and arrows, and we, of course, amongst our seven apps, we have one called Thermo Sudoku. We have another called Arrow Sudoku, and they are entirely based around those forms of the puzzle. Um, we also have classic Sudoku and four others, uh, Killer and Miracle and uh, Chess Sudoku, and I can't remember the seventh, but there we go. <laughs> They're all available on the links under the video, uh, as is our merchandise in the, in the store, and as is all the links to Discord and to our Patreon site. Um, Simon will be announcing the winner of the of the November competition, uh, the Paint by Numbers Institute degree, uh, tomorrow. And that that will be that will also be releasing um, solve videos for the PBN Institute. Now we're not going to do the whole pack because I think there were 45 puzzles. I'm afraid that is more videos than we can arrange to achieve during a month. We are doing um, well, we've done six of the harder puzzles, and the constructors have done one each. So that's eight puzzles, um, and they will be available to the $3 Patreons tomorrow. So that is all going on there. Now, let's have a look at the rules of this puzzle, and we'll be recapping the rules of, <coughs> of Thermo and Arrow Sudoku. So along a thermometer starting from the bulb numbers must increase so that will be smaller than that which will be smaller than that which will be smaller than that and that will be bigger than them all and the same going the other way to this end and then this will be smaller than that so that's how a thermometer works uh, along the arrows the arrow the cells on the arrows add up to the number in the attached circle so those three add up to that one then we have a couple of greater than signs. The number in the middle is, well, this, sorry, this number is less than that. This number is also less than that. And this central cell is less than all of those cells that are pointing at it. So this is smaller than those. I guess all of that could have been done with thermos as well. I presume that Kyle has created this to showcase the beholder and its face. Uh, and the thermos wouldn't have looked quite so accurate there, but there we go. Um, so, Eye of the Beholder, do give it a try on the link under the video. You can judge from the video length how long it might take you, based on if you've tried puzzles that I've done before. Um, I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. And, yeah, initially there's not much to go on. We know that three cells in a box that see each other have to be at least one, two, and three. So these four digits, which all have three cell arrows, must be six, seven, eight, or nine. And I'm studying the puzzle, wondering if I can avoid using the Fistemafel theorem. And I don't see a way. So... So let's explain the Fistemafel theorem, which is the first version we learnt about of set theory. And what I'm going to do is highlight row 3 and row 7 in the grid, and column 3 and column 7. Now let's... that's a terrible bit of highlighting at the end there. Let's make them all blue. If we were to work out what digits are in row 3, row 7, column 3 and column 7, 
In row three, we obviously have one set of the digits one to nine. In row seven, we also have one set of the digits one to nine. Now, if we were to also add the set that's in column three and the set that's in column seven, we'd have four sets of the digits one to one to nine, except that we'd have counted these four cells twice because they're overlapping. So let's just remember that. We have four sets of the digits one to nine if we count these four twice in blue. Now I'm going to highlight these corner boxes in orange and each of them, by the rules of Sudoku, has a set of the digits one to nine. So all the blues are the exactly the same digits at the moment as all the oranges. Now, if we take out cells that are equally blue and orange, then we're still left with a set of digits that are exactly the same as each other, orange versus blue. Although in the case of these corner cells, we can take out the orange and reduce the purple to a blue. So we're only counting it once. And that gives us this. Hang on. Oh, I've lost the highlighting on that one for some reason. Right. So they become blue. And now we have 16 cells highlighted in blue, 16 cells highlighted in, the orange, in orange, and they must be exactly the same digits. And that's why this is called Fistemafel's ring. And these are called Fistemafel's boxes. Because this pattern applies in any Sudoku with these 3x3 three three boxes. It must do. Because of that highlighting that I've just done. So that's potentially very useful. And let's see how we can use it here. And if we can, I mean, it might be the wrong track, but the fact that all these, that all the thermos are on this ring, along with these circle digits, suggests something is going on. Now, the first thing I'm thinking is, is this a set of the digits 9, 8, 7 and 6? If they couldn't appear on the arrows, then the only, let's actually, let's go back to the highlighted version. Here we go. The only cells in the orange that aren't on the arrows are these four. There's one in each box. And if they were the only places you could put six, seven, eight or nine, they'd have to be the same as these four. But that is not the case, unfortunately, because you can have nine in a circle and six on its arrow with a two, one. So that would be, if you had two nines here, sixes on the arrows, then you'd only have to find spaces in the non-arrow orange cells for these two. So, oh no, the, these two would have to be sixes. No, six could be on the thermo. Yeah, that, that really breaks the, the usefulness of this. So, are we not using Fistemafel's theorem, or are we using it for something else? Yes, the other thing we can do is forget about... Yes, let's forget about the fact that it's exactly the same digits. Let's concentrate on the fact that the same digits obviously add up to the same total. I think this might be more profitable. Um, now, the rule with arrow Sudoku is that those digits on the arrow add up to that number in the circle. So if all I care about, I don't worry about what the digits are, I just worry about subtracting from blue and orange the same number. So I take that orange and that blue and subtract them because they're the same number. And if I do the same, I'm going to end up with very few orange cells highlighted and quite a lot of blue. And that might be promising. Now, what can this blue add up to? Let's bear in mind that we've got these thermos. So at the minimum, this goes one, two, three, four, five. And from that one, two, three, four, five. So what do they add up to? Five, four, three, two, one adds up to 15. Another five, four, three, two, one would also add up to 15. That would be 30, but we've counted the one twice. So that's 29. Plus maybe one, one and two to keep it to the minimum is 33. No, it's not. It's 32. Now that's a shame because I think the minimum for these or the maximum for these orange cells is 34. 
And that's because you could put 9 and 8 in column 8, 9 and 8 in column 1, and you can't get more than that in the columns. So there's two degrees of freedom around these cells. 9, 8, 7, 6 there, and these... Well, there's two degrees of freedom, but they can only apply towards the end of this thermo. So here, one, but there's two degrees of freedom, so two or three. Um, on this thermo even, obviously that could be a one, and this could be a two, but there's two degrees of freedom, so that could go up to four. But this couldn't go up to three. It could go up to 2 if that was a 3, and that would use up the degrees of freedom. But on this thermo, I think this has to be a 1 to keep it down. Otherwise, it pushes everything up by 1, and that takes away 4 degrees of freedom on each line. And I think these have to be 2s, and these have to be 3s. Again, if we push that up to 4, it would push that up to 5 and that to 6. And that would use up three degrees of freedom, which is too many. So they are threes. Then we've got a little bit of wiggle room. Four, five, I reckon five, six, and seven. Five, six, and seven. And now... Now two is looking at that cell. So that... Oh, so we've lost one of the degrees of freedom on that cell. It's gone up from the minimum. So we have got to remove one degree of freedom everywhere else. So they come down to seven. These now have to be fours. That can't be three. This can't even be two. That's become a one. We've lost a degree of freedom out of all of these. They can't have a six in now. And does that make anything else happen? No, apparently not. Um, I just want to check the maths again. So we've got 10, 19, 20 already here. <clears throat> the minimum, 23, 28, 29, 34. Oh, how's this happened? That's perfect. 34 is the number I want. Why has that happened and I haven't realised that we lost... I thought we only lost one degree of freedom here when this couldn't be a two. Maybe I'd added them up wrong. Now I need to check again. <laughs> um, 10, 19, 20. Minimums make that 26, 29, 34. Well, that's definitely right. So did I get the original maths wrong? 15 plus 14 is 29. 1 and 2 is 32. I did. And 1 is 33. That's what I added up to the first time. I should have stuck with that. There was only ever one degree of freedom. Sorry. And that got eliminated when this became a 2. So this, these are the minimums now. 3, 5, 5, and 1. And now if you add up blue, they will add up to the same as orange. And I think that is what we're using the Fistemafel ring for today. So what else can we do now? Um, not sure I can use these orange 8s and 9s at all. Okay, let's have a think about what we've learned. Right, on this arrow, 5 plus that equals that. So this is now 2 or 4, and that must be 7 or 9. Can't be 3 or 1 because they're in the box. This one can't be 1, 2 or 3, so that's 4, 5 or 6. Over here, this can be 2, 3, 6, 7, 8. No, it can't be 3, because that would be a 4. Oh, it can't be 2 either, because there's a 3 there looking at that cell. So 1 plus 6, 7 or 8. This one, ooh, it's not going to be 1, because that can't be 3. Ah, this also can't be 8 or 9. Actually, that's true over here. This can't be 8. Um, now, this can't be 8 or 9, so it's got to be kept down to... It's got to be a 7 because this has to be at least five if it's not one. There we go, extra digits. Um, that's an eight, nine pair now, given this eight, nine pair in orange. We can fill in six and one. The six looks straight across the grid, and the beholder is telling us its secrets. We've finished box four. 
Um, this one is by Sudoku. It now can't be 7, 9, 3, 5, 8, or 2. So that makes it 1, 4, or 6. But it can't be 6 because all these cells are bigger. Actually, it can't be 4 because these can't both be bigger than 4. There's only 6 that's bigger than 4 in this row to place. So that is a 1. Uh, which is the least helpful digit we could place there. We've got 2, 4, and 6 in the rest of the row. That one can't be 4. Now up here, this now can't be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, and it's smaller than two other digits, so it's 6 or 7, and they're bigger. 3's over here somewhere. Um, 5 is in one of those two cells. Oh, three in the central box must be there. That is five or nine. This is two, five or nine, as is, oh, that's two or nine, okay. Um, right. Now what? How do we get into the corners? I don't really see. Um, I don't know. Let's have a think about what we can do now. Ah, two and three are both in those sets. So two and three can't be there or there by Sudoku. So they must be on this arrow, which is either therefore two, three, one equals six or two, three, four equals nine. That's interesting. Three Similarly here and here has to be on this arrow. Um, it's much more helpful when you get two of them. There has to be a one on this arrow. Ah, one and five have to be on this arrow because of those five one pairs. So this is either, well, it can't be six or seven now. It's either one, five, two or one, five, three. This can't be 7 if 3 has to be on its arrow. Um, chum, chum, chum. That's interesting. Now, is there a way of telling whether 1 is on here or not? I don't think there is. Four, five, one, seven, eight. 2 is in one of those cells, 3 is in one of those, that's not really getting anything done now. Is this 152 or 153? Whatever it is, the 2 or the 3 would have to go up here in the column. Ah, so this can't be 1, 2, 3, because either 2 or 3 will go there. If, if there's a 3 on this arrow, 3 there and 3 there uses up the 3 for row, columns 8 and 9, so 3 would be up there. And if there's two there, then two in one of those cells means two's up there. So this can't be a six. It's gradual elimination. Um, if that's... Oh, look, if this is a four, that's beautiful. If this is a four, we get a seven here. That makes this a 9, which makes this a 4. Suddenly we've got 4s in those positions, and there's nowhere left for 4 in the middle column. So that is not a 4. That's very pretty. Uh, so we end up with an 8-9 pair in the top row now. Is that any use? Might not be. Um, that was interesting, though. What? Maybe there's another... What, if that becomes a 6, then we get 9, 7, 2. Oh, can that be 9? That would make this 8, 9, 8. I need one more breakthrough like that, and I'm probably getting there then. Right, let's think again. 8 isn't here, so it's in one of those two cells. That's not very 
exciting. Um, oh, it's a clever puzzle already, isn't it? I like this. Uh, 89176. That can't be 5 or 3, so it's 2 or 4. This can't be 2 or 3, so it's 4 or 5. Hmm. Oh, there's a 1 here. Not in the blue cells. Now that is interesting because that means that both of these arrows can't have a one on. One of them can, but not both because that would be three ones in columns one and two. Sudoku doesn't allow that. Now what that means is that one of these arrows doing without a one has to be two, three, four with a nine on its circle. Oh, and it can't be this one because there's a 2 or a 4 there. So if that was 2, 3, 4, you couldn't fill this cell. So this must be the arrow with 2, 3, 4 on. That's a 9. Once this is not a 9, there must be a 1 on its arrow because any number below 9 with 3 cells needs a 1 on them. The 1's not here because of this 1. It's either 1, 3, 2, making that a 4, or 1, 3, 4, making that a 2. So that's a kind of quadruple in the box. So that becomes 6 or 7. 9 in this box can only go in one place now. Actually, that's been the case for a while. I just didn't, didn't spot it before. So that's an 8. Oh, 2, 3, 4 makes that a 5. That's much more straightforward. Ah, oh, and this is a one, two, three, four quad in column two. So that's six or seven. One now has to be up here in one of these two with six or seven. Four has become over here in this row. Um, I thought we'd have got through now. Five, three, one. No, they're not very useful. Is this six or eight? Nine, five, six, seven. I don't know. Oh, bother. Um, these are from four, six, eight, and four, six, seven, respectively. Oh, this changed, didn't it? It became seven or eight. Ah, and four is in one of those cells, so this is not. One, two, four. And since four's not in it, it's one, two, five, making an eight sum. That's an eight. That's going to fix this as a nine. Doesn't fix this one yet, but nine with one, five on it is one, three, five. That's an eight. Nine at the top of the grid. Uh, this one is an eight now. So we get five there. Haven't resolved this yet, not to worry. We get a four in one of those cells because of that four can't be there. And that's going to look straight across the grid and make this a two. That's going to get us our last circle because we take two off the arrow. It's now one, three, four makes eight. These are from four, six, and seven. Two is in these cells, which is not helpful. Um, Still don't know about that six, seven pair. Five, six, seven, those are selected from. Well, I thought this would have fallen a bit now. Ah, or another quad, one, two, three, five. Yes, that's useful, that makes this a nine. This can't be three, it's four, six, or seven, so we place three there. It can't, sorry, it can't be four or seven in there in the box. So actually, box six is suddenly done. Those can't be sixes. This can't be a seven. That can't be a two. This can't be a three. That can't be an eight either. Uh, we've got a four, six pair and a one, five pair in the column. Okay. Eight, nine, one, two, five. There must be a three here. That's not new information. It's just a corollary of what we've done before. Maybe I'm missing something down the middle. This can't be five. Five in the central box must now be here. That's a two actually. 
These aren't twos, that's a four, six pair. So this is seven, surrounded by eight and nine. This has become nine since we got that seven. So we get four on the arrow. Now we're surely finishing off. Um, this is a naked single six. We get a four up at the top. That can't be four. Nine in this box is here. Then there's a six, seven pair, which makes this one. We're left with a six, seven pair in box one that I cannot disambiguate. Five there though, that is very helpful. One, two, five on the arrow. That means five on this arrow. Not in those cells. Uh, the one can't be there, and two can't be there. Five, one, two, eight. Still three is going to go in one of those, and I don't know which one. Nine, five, eight, one, three, but we are finishing surely here. Oh, this box, eight, yes, and seven, and two. We've got a one, three, four, triple, so we can place six and five in the row. We can place two in this box, and four and seven six over here. This must be seven. That does the six, seven pair up the top. This six, seven pair has been done by the seven at the bottom. Uh, four and six. We're just going to have these arrows left in a moment. Seven and three. Let's do the middle box. Nine and eight. Six and four. Can't. Let's start here. That's a three, so we can do four and two. That's now a one, and we can do four and three. One and a three to finish. Beauty, they say, is in the eye of the beholder, and I declare that to be a beautiful beholder. Maybe not as beautiful as that one, but still pretty beautiful. Well done, Kyle. That's a really nice puzzle. Um, let's just take out the colouring because we don't need it anymore and admire the beauty of the original beholder. That's a very clever puzzle. I mean, effectively, it's just... Arrows in eight of the boxes, one one Fistemafel ring of thermos, which was very well designed, and a couple of little arrows in the eye in the eye and mouth places of the of the beholder. Very clever. Maybe I'll have to take up Dungeons and Dragons now. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and uh, hope to see you again soon on the channel. Bye for now.